What makes a good dungeon? I think many of us, myself included, play through things like Zelda or Dark Souls without thinking hard about why the dungeons are interesting or fun to play. We really only notice when we get stuck, and decide it's the stupid, mean, evil game designer's fault and we did nothing wrong. So how do I prevent people from feeling the same way when they go through my creations? Well, for those of you who don't know, my name is Matt and I make games and pixel art. I've been working on a fun town building RPG with my brother Mike called Clean Up an Isle Goblin, and I'm at the point where I need the first human infested dungeon for our goblin hero to conquer. I plan on having a fair amount of these dungeons and want them to be similar in length to, say, a Breath of the Wild shrine. Just something quick to knock out and get a little taste of combat between the day-to-day -day activities. I started off by doing a bit of research to learn as much as I could about any clever tricks or things I should have in the back of my mind while laying out a dungeon. Different games will have different types of dungeons, but overall there are a few key principles that stay very constant. Most dungeons typically consist of a system of locks and keys, along with loops, branches, and one-way paths. It's also generally helpful to make a little flowchart for the dungeon while you're drawing it out. So going one by one, the locks and keys concept seems pretty self-explanatory. Typically, it's in the form of a physical key. You find this key, it unlocks a door somewhere, and you're allowed to go into the next zone of the dungeon. Despite the name, however, it's not always a physical key that allows you to move forward. Sometimes it's killing an enemy, sometimes it's pressing a button, or even getting a new ability. Hollow Knight does this all over the place. You find new abilities that allow you to fly over acidic lakes, reach new heights you couldn't before, and slam through the ground. These are all very carefully placed by the developers, so you only go into various zones exactly when they want you to. So let's say I get the idea that since this dungeon basically serves as an oil storage facility, I want the player to be overpressurizing the oil systems until the whole thing goes kablooey. I decided I want three pumps where the player can hit big buttons to turn them off and build up the pressure. Pressing all three buttons unlocks the elevator to the final zone where they can destroy the whole factory. So with these super basic building blocks, I just need to figure out how to lay it out. And that's where the loops, branches, and one-way paths come in. Each one is exactly how it sounds. The loops will finish up with the player exactly where they started, which helps prevent the player from backtracking. Since walking square by square is kind of mind-numbing in my game, I'll be using a fair amount of loops in my first dungeon to prevent them from having to walk 500 miles, or 500 more. The branches simply mean the path splits, which will be nice for hiding little goodies. I think I'll have little unnecessary rooms with some bonus loot for the player to explore quickly. I also think I'll have my three pumps be spread out in three separate branched paths, so the player can knock them out one at a time, then come back to the elevator. As for the one-way paths, I'm thinking that my loops will only allow you to go through one way. You'll see what I mean. Now I'll admit, this dungeon is super basic. I found this article that shows a map of the Forest Temple from Twilight Princess. You'll see the left side shows a general flow you can go through, and the right side shows the actual physical location of all the stuff. It's quite complex in comparison, but that's to be expected for a full-on Zelda temple. I just want it to be a little warm-up for the player as this is their first combat encounter. I don't want it to be too overwhelming and will definitely make them more complex in the future, but for now, I think it'll do. So I got started making all the enemies I thought I'd need. I just kinda went with what I thought made sense to me. I made a little goop shooter that will shoot globs of goo at the player. I also made this frantic little scientist who is very frightened and will have random movements. And then we've got this burly mechanic who will chase down the player, and then there's this cargo bot. It'll just walk back and forth fulfilling its cargo duties till the end of time. And finally, there's this large knight who will also chase down the player. He's also immune to being hit from the front and sides, but you'll notice he's got a bit of a weak spot. So I spent a very sizable chunk of time finalizing all of these assets here. I'm pretty speedy at pixel art these days, but I never fail to underestimate the amount of time this stuff takes. I eventually got them done and slapped them all into Unity and fired it up. So I've got a lot of visual tweaks to make, and there are a few things I want to change about this layout, but I've got a very basic semblance of a dungeon here. You can go up to these pumps and click the button to shut them down, and then you'll notice the corresponding light on the elevator lights up. Once all three are lit up, you can head on down and fight the little challengers down below to progress the plot. I may swap this out for a full-on boss later on, we'll see how people do with it. Since I know exactly what each enemy will do, I find it really easy, but I think once a few people play through it, we'll quickly find out if it's too challenging or not. Some of the areas I put in here are especially cruel, like this little walkway here with all the goop and walking enemies. We'll just have to see how people handle it. Now, you'll recall in the last video I'd mentioned that I put in my one month notice for my job, and today, as I'm recording this, it's actually my very last day. This next month will hopefully involve more videos, game progress, and commissions. I found that staying afloat with commissions is surprisingly doable. I've got a few consistent buyers that provide a steady flow of income as I help them with game assets. That said, if you'd like to check out the Patreon and see what rewards we have there, it would be much appreciated. As those Patreon numbers go up, I'm able to work more on game and pixel art tutorials since I won't have to spend as much time drawing other stuff. We've got some fun rewards too, so make sure you check it out at the link below. And everyone, it has been a long time since I disclosed wishlist numbers. 
As I mentioned in the past, the Steam wishlist count is what Steam uses as a primary indicator of the game's future success. They say the magic minimum number is about 10,000, and I believe last time we checked in we were at about 3,000 on April 30th. We're now checking two months later, and this is where we're at. As I record this audio, it's at 3,755, but it's likely to have gone up a bit since then. This is a pretty solid increase that I'm quite happy with. I've noticed the channel overall is doing a bit better and gaining more traction, so this is exciting that the wishlists are trending up a bit as well. Of course this is thanks to you all, and I'm very excited that you're here with me on this journey. I really just want to make a game that's fun to play, and I'm glad I've got a good chunk of support going into it. So hopefully any other developers out there find that wishlist info to be useful. I know I'm always super curious where other games are at wishlist wise. So anyways, thanks again everyone for all the support, and I appreciate you dropping by. Don't forget to check out the Patreon, and hit all the magic YouTube buttons if you like what you see. I'll see you next time. What's this? The first Patreon outro? That's right, the time has come to shout out our eternally giving horde of goblins. I'd like to give a super special shout out to our goblin deity patrons from this month of June, including Zachary Nice, Sarah Larif, Jared Tucker, Joey Mayer, Charles Philibig, TX Redcore, Geoffrey Harden, Riley Smith, Clinton Barr, RX, Brett Hudson, Anna B, Julian Dickin, Jackson Singleton, Matthew Spencer, Jace, and Hannah. You're all amazing and I appreciate all of the support.